In this sub lesson, we're going to wire up a patch panel to an RJ45 jack. And this patch panel is a type of patch panel you might see in a server room or wiring closet or data center. And you have your RJ45 connectors. And on the back, you have all your punch downs for your individual wires. And the jack, that's the type of thing that you'll see at a workstation, wherever a computer is. And it might be flush mounted to the wall, or it might be within a cubicle system or whatever, but you punch down to these wires here, and that's what makes the connection between them. And then a patch cable goes from this to the computer, and on the other end, you have lots of patch cables that usually go to switches, like the Cisco switch that we're using, and in fact, that's what we'll do. Now, you want to have some tools handy to do this connection, and I call it a long-distance connection. The permanent physical plant because these types of connections are the things that are permanent. You, you run the cable, you make the connections and you leave them and computers can use them every day. Now, of course you'll need some cable. Now, I've got cat six cable here and everything is cat six. We've got the cat six patch panel, cat six, uh, cable, cat six, RJ 45 jacks, but then you need some tools. You should have a good cutter to cut the cable. Then you want a wire stripper, which can take care of stripping the plastic jacket off of the cable and exposing the wires. And then you want a punch down tool. And this is what you use to punch down the individual wires to all these connections on the jack and on the patch panel. And uh, these jacks came with a nice little mounting tool. And so you can place this right in here and that's what we'll do. I used to use just a two by four with some uh, big staples connected so I could mount this and keep it secure because you need something solid to punch down onto because it makes a lot of, it creates a lot of pressure. So that's a nice uh, item to have if I buy these in bulk and uh, you know, if you buy 25 of these or whatever, you'll get one of these. And you also need a testing tool to test the connection. Like I say, testing's very important. And so here I have a basic LAN tester. You got the tester itself and then a remote. And so you'd connect one end to the patch panel and the other end to the jack once you're done. And you do that with patch cables. So we'll show all that. Okay, so we'll start with the length of cable and just cut it one good cut to take that guy off. And then we'll start working with the individual wires. We place the cable into our wire stripper and I put it in there about an inch, inch and a half or so, turn it around and pull that PVC jacket off. Get rid of the excess that exposes the wires and you have eight wires. This is known as UTP, unshielded twisted pair cable. And it has four pairs. You've got the blue pair, the orange pair, the green pair, and the brown pair, collectively known as Bog B. And these pairs each has a solid color and a white color. So for example, we've got the white blue and then the solid blue. Then we have in here the white orange, solid orange. White green, solid green. White brown, solid brown. And you adjust these in order and connect them to your patch panel or your jack according to what standard you're using. And usually that's going to be the 568B standard, which specifies this order. White orange, orange. White green, blue. White blue, green. And white brown, brown. And so what we're going to do is we're going to undo all the wires so that they're all loose. And you've got your extra thread and so on that you can use for cabling purposes if you're doing long distance runs. But we're going to actually just cut these for now and just show the individual wires connected to both the patch panel and the jack. So we'll start with the patch panel and on the back here you see numbers in the center. Those are the port numbers that you want to wire up. 
So there's a collection of eight punch downs for each port. And they show the wiring scheme depending on whether you're using A or B. And we're going we're to use 568B. A is the older standard, though you may see it for a variety of reasons. So we're going to use B. So we need to punch down these guys according to these colors and these guys according to these colors. So it's going to be white orange, orange, white brown, brown down here, and up here, white blue, blue, and white green, green. And you can see that they're numbered as well. When you're dealing with 568B, as I mentioned, it's white orange, orange, that's one and two, then white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, and brown. But really, just you want to make sure you match the colors. That's the most important thing. And we test this with our continuity tester at the end, and it tests every pin. Now, with this cabling, what you want to do is, as I mentioned, we want to get rid of this excess. If we're punching down here, you know, cut that out of there. And you want to try to get the wires as close in as possible and get that PVC jacket as close as you can. And the reason for this is because you want to keep the twists going as far as you can along the length of the cable before they get to the termination point. And so we want to try and make it as close as possible. So we start fitting these in now. And we'll actually place these guys directly into the slots. Like so. And you could do it by hand. I also have a couple tools for this. And you want to make sure that you're doing it to the correct colors. Make sure that those colors match. Once we have those wires in there placed in by hand or with a tool, then you're going to use your punch down tool. And it, you can see it has a cut side and it says cut on it. That's going to go to the outside so that it cuts off the excess when we do the punch down. So we place the tool in there. And we punch down directly on that guy. And we do that for each one. And if you get a little extra, you could do a double punch or a triple punch. And over time, it should get rid of the excess for you. You want to make sure they're fully down into each of these slots. So once again, you're punching down here. And you want to make sure it goes all the way in and gets that individual wire all the way punched down so it meets the contact inside that slot. You want copper on copper, that's the goal here. And always remember to have that cut side on the outside so it cuts off the excess. Do a couple more punches. Remove the excess. And then you wanna take a look at your work. You wanna see here and make sure all these pins are all the way down to the bottom. You don't want them loose at the top here. They have to be all the way down to make that connectivity. Very important. And same thing on the other side. They have to be all the way down. So that's how you do punch downs on this. You just got to make sure that it's meeting the requirement, that the specification is met. If you're using 568B on both ends, make sure you're meeting those colors and make sure it's you know, exactly what it shows on there. White, orange, orange, white, brown, brown, white, blue, blue, white, green, green. That's what we have here. And so that's the connection for this patch panel. And on the other end, we'll connect to the jack. And once again, we'll strip the PVC jacket off here. And you don't want to do too many cuts because you don't want to cut into the wires themselves. So you got to be careful with that. You might lose co uh, connectivity if you do so. So pull that guy off and we'll do the same thing we did on the other end, spreading out all the wires. And now if we zoom in on the jack, you'll see that we have these same types of slots. And then once again, we have A and B. We're going to be using 568B. 
so we know exactly which colors go where. We have orange, white orange, green, and white green. And if we turn it over, you have the rest here. It's going to be white blue, blue, white brown, brown. So you have to make sure that you're setting up your wires in the correct order. And we'll do that now. And then we'll punch it down in the same manner as the patch panel. And we place the wires in one by one, once again. And as I mentioned, you can use a little tool, something like this. There's several out there. Sometimes uh, cabling or jacks come with a little tool to help kind of push them in temporarily. Until you're ready to do the full punch. Got to be careful with these. You don't want to damage the wires. Okay, so all these wires are now placed in there in the correct order. Let's actually check that. And we got white, orange, orange, and white, green, green. And on this side, white, blue, blue, and white, brown, brown. And we're good. Okay. Sometimes the brown may look a little purple in video and in uh, dim lighting. So you have to watch for that. Use a flashlight if necessary. An LED flashlight really helps to show the colors if you're in a dark area. Uh, so now we're going to punch these down the same way. Like I say, we want to keep that cut side out. So it cuts off the excess. And we'll punch that straight down for each of the slots. And we can place this guy right in here. And this little mounting tool is a nice little feature. And start punching. Do as many punch downs as necessary to get the wire to cut. But again, you want to make sure that those wires are all the way down in the slots. And quite often, I'll, I'll try to make the PVC get a little tighter here. This isn't the greatest job, but I usually try to get the PVC a little tighter, sometimes even inside here. The less space there is for open wires, uh, the less chance of a loss of uh, data transfer. You, you want the highest speed you can get with CAT6, and so you want to keep that PVC jacket as close as possible to here, to the connection point, so that the twists go all the way to that connection point, or as close as possible. So again, I'll quite often make this a bit tighter. I'm going to do some more punches and get rid of the excess. Now you always got to check. And make sure that the wires are all the way down. You can see here a couple are not quite down all the way. Like that solid brown. So we'll punch that again. And make sure they're all the way in there. And that's that. So that guy's set up. Like I say, I usually will make this a little bit tighter. This is for demonstration purposes. Uh, it should work fine anyways. But um, a little tough to do this while recording video as well. But uh, that's basically how you do it. And then these usually come with some caps, so you can cap those wires. And we'll take this out of the mount. And this whole jack would then go into a plate. And some type of plate, either a flush mount plate or something like that. I usually use blue for data. And if I'm also setting up telco, uh, Phone lines, I'll use white for those. That's kind of an unwritten rule in the Northeast in the United States, but that's what I do. And so that guy's finished. And now we can move on to the testing stage.